Alrighty, hey you guys. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while since we've seen each other. And if you would get into your chat there and just let us know who's here and where you are, that would be really cool. California, we've had a ton of rain and snow and sleet and hail and every other kind of moisture, which is a big change from our five year drought. And it's very welcome but it's brought along a lot of mischief so one of the things that happened is our water pipe got broken so we're without water and they're actually doing work outside there you may hear some outside noise i told them please don't jackhammer during the show so we won't have any jackhammering but anyway the joys of weather change and climate change and all the stuff that it brings but the net result for us here is lots more water than we've seen in years, which is very welcome. The hills are absolutely gorgeously green, velvety green, and uh, that's really awesome. Hi, Sue, and hi, Christopher in the UK. Uh, we are going to talk about my one of my favorite subjects here in a minute, which is composition. And we're also going to give a critique for you guys. So uh, tell you what, let's just dive in here. So first of all, just want to remind you that our sponsor is Bay Photo. And we love these guys because they're going to help you make prints. Now look at this, Exposure, 30% off. Bob Holmes uses these. He loves them. I use them too. They just, what they do is they take a print and you can stretch it across this frame and put that, you know, in your house or office or whatever. It makes a really cool print. You can also switch out what print you want to use if you want to do that. So those are cool and 30% off, that's a really good deal. So grab one of those. I think you'll really like them. I would just take whatever your favorite print is that you feel doesn't need a frame because it's, it's basically going to come out from the wall. So there'll be a little depth there, but it won't have an actual frame around it. And that actually can look really cool. So grab one of those and get a print made. You can get them in all sorts of different sizes. Let's see what else we got here. 25% off on albums. Those are books, essentially. So you guys can create a book, 25% discount on that. And you've got all sorts of different varieties of books that you can get and then below that we have 15 percent off on framed prints i use bay photo lab i sell my prints in our little carmel town and i actually get those printed at bay photo and i have them do the framing it's such a no hassle thing i got to tell you if you've ever messed around with doing your own framing don't do it it's like we're photographers framing is a whole different art unless you love cutting things that you can easily mess up and maybe you know you you get your exacto knife out or whatever you're cutting with and you make one little wrong slice or you put a thumbprint in there or you frame it and there's some dust it can be the most frustrating process in the world i don't recommend it use bay photo lab and you're going to get 15 percent off so after the show, head over to our friends at Bay Photo Lab. Show them your support and support yourself. Okay, so let's talk about my favorite subject is composition. Why? There's really two things that go on with composition. Basically, composition fits into the cycle of photography at capture. That's Stage three, that's a finger that I slammed in a door. <laughs> Getting a little wear and tear here on this body. Um, anyway, capture is really what it's all about. That's where the, you put all your tools together, you visualize, you know your equipment, now you're gonna go out and capture the photograph. So what does that mean? That means you use lighting most of the time that means for me, I mean, almost 99.9% of the time that means natural light. Depending on what type of photographer you are, you may be using strobes, you may be using 
LEDs or whatever. You might be in a studio. That's still part of lighting, obviously. But you use your tools of lighting and you use your tools of composition. Why do you do those things? Why do you use the tools of composition? I'm going to throw that question out. And Susie, good afternoon from Athens, Ohio. Wow. Okay. And uh, Peter, so who's got an answer to that? What's, what do you guys think is the reason we use these tools of composition? What's the net result? What do they do for you? I'll leave that hanging here and see if anybody has a good answer for that. But the thing is, you need to also be able to train your eye so that you can spot photographs anywhere. And that's a trained skill. How do you do that? One way is to do this and just look for photographs. Also, look through books, look at art, you know, and see how did they frame it? How did they compose? And that's any kind of art within a frame, really. Like, how did they compose that painting? Where was it framed? You know, what, what kind of perspective do we have? Do we have an angle looking down? Do we look up? Is it on a diagonal? I mean, there's all these different compositional tools that you can see in any art form. Same thing with film, movies. How did the, how did the director of photography and director frame that image that's, you know, that they're shooting? That's another valid way to learn about framing. So looking at how other people have done it, but then you've got to train your own eye. And that's a continuous process. Training your eye is no different than training any other part of your anatomy. If you're going to learn tennis, what do you do? you got to go out and swing that racket so many times that you don't have to think about where to place your racket if you're going to do a, a, a net shot or you're going to lob it or whatever it is. You don't really have to think about it. You see what your opponent is doing, you anticipate, and you hit the shot accordingly exactly how composition is. You see the environment. What are the elements in the environment that you could utilize? And then you respond accordingly. You don't have to go through any long thought process. It's just instantaneous recognition of that photograph. So to help you guys spot photographs everywhere. Does anybody have an answer yet? Why are we doing composition anyway? But to help you, I have created, and you know, I've written a book on the 83 compositional tools, but I've also created a short form of that, which you can put on your phone and carry around with you so you can get instant inspiration. And let's go ahead and take a look at that, Jared. There it is. It's called the Composition Field Guide, and it's meant to be used on your phone you're out and about and you go, wow, I just need some inspiration. There's some directions. Keep going. There's table of contents. Don't worry about all that. So this is one that everybody knows. Framing. Okay. What does that mean? Put an edge around it. Just don't forget. That's like your basic tool. Framing comes in lots and lots of different flavors. And this is the most basic one, which is landscape or portrait framing. What does it do? It provides a layer. So if you notice that little photograph down there, right underneath it, yep. There's a layer in front of the scene behind it. And then what does that also do? It, it not only creates a layer, but it then focuses your eye on the background. So that's number one. Don't ever forget about framing. Use it all the time. Shooting things in landscape or portrait mode. You know, here's the thing. Go back up. So we have two different views of deer. That's They're both in Yosemite. Landscape because I wanted a kind of a broader feeling of, you know, what is going on behind them with Half Dome and the fact that there's a, several deer grazing. And then below that, I took a portrait of a deer. Okay, I'm using portrait mode. But I want you to remember that these things are not have nothing to do with whether you're taking a portrait or you're taking a picture of a landscape. That those just happen to be called that. You can take plenty of portraits in landscape mode and some of the best 
portraits, my favorite by Arnold Newman, he shoots in landscape. And you should, you know, regard any subject matter, whether it's, quote, a landscape or a portrait, just decide which framing mode you want. And this worked out well for the deer because I wanted to focus on the deer. I also want those verticals um, going up there with the trees, you know, so I am emphasizing the verticalness of that photograph. The deer is standing up straight and the trees are up, right? So it kind of helps get that across. Let's see a couple more here. Remember, you can turn your camera at any angle you want. This is a photograph I took in the seventh grade in my school. And I tilted, I didn't use an iPhone, but I tilted it at an angle, which turned out later I found out was 18 degrees. I didn't know that at the time. What did that do? It just changed the geometry and it made it more interesting. So remember, you can always move the angle of your camera around. You're not, you're not, you know, just set in some sort of mode where you, you have to shoot everything like this. Turn your camera. In filmmaking, they call it a Dutch angle. And that adds tension and excitement. Um, that's something you should be, you know, using in your toolkit. And the cool thing about this, you have this on your phone. You go, oh, yeah, I forgot about this one. Oh, yeah, I could try that. Okay. And the other thing you should do is go out and consciously try every one of these. Just find an example that works for you. Okay, let's look at the next one here. There's little tips along the way here. Now, points of thirds, you notice we don't call it the rule of thirds. There's no rule, there's no law. And it works often, not always. In this case, this is a photograph by a really great uh, wildlife photographer, David Smith, who I met in South Africa many years ago. And he made a really good point when you're shooting animals, photographing them, have enough space in front of them so yeah, the animal's looking in that direction, leave space there. Let's say we cropped it really close to its nose, it would feel very claustrophobic. It'd feel like there's no space for that animal to view. And in this case, he put the, the crosshairs pretty much right you know, on its face there. And that will draw attention to it. And it adds a dynamic quality. It doesn't always work. It's you know, it's a trick you can't use over and over again. Use it as needed and be fluid enough to say, no, that's not going to work. Okay, let's look at a couple more here. And this is geometry. I love geometry. Cartier-Bresson made a big point out of, he said, geometry can be a pleasure. This is um, a bridge right nearby where I live called Bixby Creek. And look at all the geometry in this there, I didn't even draw them all, but there's the pyramid there, you know, and there's that arc, and there's a straight line. Geometry is very interesting. Whenever you find a lot of geometry, go for it. So a couple more, we'll let you guys try it. This is one of my favorite, which is leading lines. Leading lines draw attention to your subject. So you have to have something for your eye to go to for a leading line to work. You can't have just leading lines and expect that that's going to be super interesting. In this case, this was a girlfriend of mine walking to carry her. She was going to saddle her horse and she was wearing, wearing, she was carrying a saddle. And I hung behind her. This is one thing we do as photographers, you know. We say, you keep walking. When I tell you to turn around, look at me. In other words, I directed the shot. Don't ever hesitate unless you're shooting a documentary, photojournalism where you're, you're not supposed to do this. Every other type of photography, you can be an active photographer and direct the shot. So I said, Mary, turn around. Good. Bam. And I had the perfect leading lines. It's also framed by the trees. And you'll notice that Many of these compositional techniques work together. Just like in cooking, you can have more than one thing in, in a recipe. You can have a, two recipes working together. And you make a pesto sauce, let's say, to go over a uh, dish, you know, with chicken in it and, and noodles. You know, and those are two different recipes, but they fit together. So think of composition the same way. You can have multiple 
compositional tools working together. Okay, I want you guys to have this, so we're going to give it away to you. This normally sells for, I don't know what we have it for, five bucks or something. But bucks, you, actually. Is it? Wow, ten whole bucks. Okay, so you guys are getting this for free. Jared will put it into the chat. Now, what I want to know is I want to know how you use this. I want to hear back from you if you guys would. Um, maybe we'll put a post on Instagram. Certainly in the AYP club, just let me know how useful this is for you and what kind of inspiration you got from it. I love to hear that feedback. Okay, so there you have it. And remember to use it on your phone when you're out and about. You can certainly look at it on your computer if you want. The link comes with different variety of ways you can view this. You can get a PDF, you can have a viewer. It's very handy. It's a new service that we started using. Okay. Well, there you go. There's my agent. I have an agent, believe it or not. I do. <laughs> some time ago, I started doing some modeling. I thought it was kind of fun. And uh, every now and then, my agent calls me up and says, Hey, Mark, we got a cool gig for you. You want to do it? By the way, it's also helpful as a photographer to know what goes on and be a model yourself. That's actually a very, very good learning experience if you haven't had a chance to do that. Try just being a model with a photographer telling you what to do and see how it feels. Okay, You'll learn a lot and you'll learn the directions that you need to give other people. Okay, well let's, uh, let's head on over. By the way, nobody answered that question. What are we doing all this? Oh, actually, uh, we did have an answer. It wasn't showing up in our Ecamm Live. Oh, where uh, but is it? Sue, uh, but Sue put rules or guidelines to create a visually pleasing image. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I see it there. That's true. And let's go one step further to tell a story. Because visually pleasing images tell a story. And I will argue that the best photographs, the best movies, the best books you know what people love stories stories go back all the way to the beginning of humanity with cavemen cave people i guess we have to call them now going out they saw something and then they came back and they told a story but then they figured out not just telling the story they figured out visually how to carve it out or get a stick or a chalk or not chalk but maybe a rock or something and and it became more and more elaborate of how to tell that story and that's where we are today with photography it goes back all the way to the depths and the earliest parts of humanity so remember you're using your camera to tell stories you will find to the degree that you tell a story you're going to generate interest why we just hunger. We love stories. We can't get enough of them. It's just what we do as people. We, we like to hear stories. We like to tell stories. And we do it in a variety of different ways. We do it with music. We do it with poetry. We do it with drawings. We do it with photography, films, whatever. Hey, you know when something happens to you, you can't wait to tell somebody else about it. It's a story, right? I've told you two or three different stories in the process of this little short little YouTube live and they're not long stories stories don't have to be long they can be very short they can be really long okay so let's look at your work here and there we are Jared all right is this our first uh, entry is by Isaac um, and this is Turkish street dogs uh, from Antalya Turkey in the fall of 2022 so when you guys look at this, your flash, what's the feeling do you get? Is there a story here? I say yes. I say absolutely. It's an interesting, you know, there's a lot of interest. The mirror image, the reflection of those interesting windows, those are really interesting windows. Yeah, with the three dogs, the three dog night. Look at that, three dog day. You know, there's an interesting story there. And it's 
Another compositional tool, which is symmetry, which we didn't cover yet, but it's certainly one of the key tools we love. A lot of symmetry here. Symmetry works. Why do these things work? Somebody, somebody made a kind of a critical remark to me about, Mark, you know, you don't really explain how come these things work. I don't know why they work. Do you? Does anybody? I mean, I don't know that you can take art and go, well, scientifically, this is the reason Picasso painted with a red pen versus a blue. You can do that, but that's not how he was doing it. He just liked that color. He liked that shape. And it worked. So these tools, you know, they work. Uh, you, if you want a scientific dissertation, okay, somebody can do that, but I don't know that's going to make your photography any better. You have to just kind of look at it and go, do these work? Yeah, this works beautifully because you've got geometry, symmetry, you've got contrast. The different dogs are not all the same and they're kind of contrasting, but there's a similarity there too. And the other cool thing, look at the reflection of each of the dogs too. A lot of cool elements here. I like it. Good one. Yeah, it's a really nice one. Yeah. All right, we got a couple of photos from people I've seen in the chat. Let's start with, this is from Chris, uh, joining us from the UK. I took this two weeks ago in Mumbai at oh, wow. 120 meters away through a double-glazed hotel window in poor light. So the little six millimeter sensor on my uh, Canon compact camera struggled to get clear faces. Um, as mm. Mark says, the best camera is the one you have. I found it fascinating that these guys were walking along this huge pipe and not the road. Yeah. So what do we have here compositionally? We have a couple of things. We have a leading line on the path they're following and that's accentuated by the lines in the road itself right there's a lot of lines there and there's some interest there there is a little story there what's going on you've captured this is a Bob Holmes tip but I like to use it myself see the foot raised there yeah he says look for that because that shows motion and you have to just be patient enough to you know get them both lined up but there's some interest there like what is going on doesn't that just kind of draw you in? Like, I agree. Like, why are they walking on the pipe? It seems to be a path. So my, I mean, I can logically kind of follow this out and go, well, you know, they don't want to walk on the road because there's probably trucks and cars. So it's, they have a path. That None of that matters. I like the, uh, you know, your kind of a sepia tone there. It works and it makes it feel old. It makes it feel... Remember, Chris Burkhart says, try to compose images that don't have a time to it. Although, I think this guy is on a cell phone, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's the only giveaway. But uh, other than that, you know, it could be a long time ago. There's other giveaways. but So, interesting. Good one. I like it. All right. This next one is from our good friend, Sue. Yeah, I saw that one, Sue. I really love that. That's yeah, it's gorgeous. such a great image. That's gorgeous, you know. The two deer looking in two different opposite directions. Um, Sue, the only thing I would do, just tiny little thing, is I would go into my Lightroom or Photoshop, and I'd make a mask from the deer, and I'd invert it, and then I would blur the background a little bit more. Mm. Yep, just behind this, just so that tree right behind those that two trees really don't interfere just pull that all you do is you make that mask you invert it and then you take sharpness i just did that a few minutes ago take your sharpness slider whoop and you can blur that out in two seconds why not that's my only recommendation otherwise it's gorgeous just you want to give your eye also a little space and it's a little compressed so that'll get you know give us a little more feeling of depth there as well but mainly it's about what do we want to have our viewer look at 
we want them to look at the deer because that's the real story. The background is the background. Let it let it fade away. So maybe you could try that, Sue, and then post it. Let's just see the before and after. But you got a great image there. Easy, easy little post processing tip there. That's a really easy one. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Chris commented. He said that he edited this in Silver FX to get this. Uh, oh, good for you. Effect going. Good. I love so, Silver FX Pro. Yeah. Yeah, we're big fans here. So yeah, DXO to... is um, been all a right. Good company to work with. Looks like George uh, Carlin. Yeah, this is uh, from Susie. That uh, is the hysterical. eyes have it. My husband and my husband and Athens County, Ohio photographer Brian with his beloved rescue mixed breed. Now wait a minute. Is this your husband or is, is your husband named Brian? I think, I think it's both. I think it's her husband oh, I see. and Athens. So yeah, I had to read that for a second. But yeah, so it's her husband with his beloved rescued mixed breed, I think. I love this picture. See, you guys are hitting it right on the head with stories. See that? See how that just kind of like tells that story. And that's that old thing about people, people's dogs and them start to blend together. I'm always flattered by that because my dog is <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, I hope hope there's some truth to it, River. But anyway, I love this. I love the textures, the similarity of textures with the whiskers and the eyes and the expression. Actually, everything is pretty pretty close there. Bam, good one. That's a All right. that's a really that's an awesome picture. We're like in the close-ups today because now we've got wow, this from this. Haran. This was taken with a Canon 7D M2 Mark II, uh, and then let's look at some of the rest of this. F-stop 6.3 ISO 6400, a 35 millimeter lens. This was taken uh in the fall of last year in uh Guracha. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. I didn't practice. I usually like yeah. to practice at a time. That's a really cool image. And you know, you've got all sorts of cool things going on with the light and the waves, the you know, the ripples in the water kind of accentuating. Awesome. I don't. I wonder if you also pulled back a little bit so we could see the rest of the animal. It'd be interesting to see, but that's a cool, intriguing photograph. And again, look at all the symmetry. Draw a line down the center, and you can see it's very symmetrical. Symmetri symmetrical. It's essentially everything is mirrored on the right and left of itself, and even the eyes eyelid or what is that it's kind of making that yeah that's I was kind of wondering that too. but the light is really interesting you know you've got a golden light there so all sorts of good things working together there good one good job we've got time for a couple more all right this is from uh, Guadalupe the raging sky good one you know, I'm a big fan of black and white when it comes to this kind of photography because there's probably not a lot of color going on there anyway. Um, you have, you know, beautiful tones of emotional kind of big, boomy clouds, you know, thunderstorm. You can actually see some rain in the background there. In the foreground, you've got those trees, which are kind of interesting. They add a little element of, of interest there. <clears throat> I would reduce that noise. Just one little technical thing. I just get rid of that noise. Uh, you know, that's an easy fix. By the way, DxO that makes Silver FX Pro also has a noise re reduction uh, app which is called Define Define 2 I think it's up to now and it's really good and it does a better job than you'll do in your other program so keep that in mind it's a good noise reduction app and that's just to you know 
that's just your own thing. You don't have to do that. It's just my recommendation. But very interesting photograph. And it's got an S curve in it. If you look at the edge, the bottom right, bottom right, kind of curve, kind of looks like there's a kind of a. No, actually, the very bottom. Go to the very bottom. Oh, I kind just of notice it kind of cur looks like an S almost, yeah. all the way over. Anyway, I just something my eye sees. Um, but good one. All right, let's look at a couple of more from you guys and see. All right, what else. here's from our good friend Amir. Uh, he did some street photography in Florence for Valentine's Day. Florence, Italy. Wow. I love it. We were there last summer. And uh, it's always a beautiful place. I got a lot of inspiration in Florence, actually, because Leonardo da Vinci was there. And that's the time I was writing Create. So I looked at every museum I could find with his stuff in it. Okay, awesome photograph. Uh, what I would do is what I told Sue, blur that background. Use a, sh a shallower depth of field to get rid of the background because we want to see this couple. They're the star of the show here. There's where your eye goes. So train yourself. When you see a shot like this, immediately dial down or open up, I should say, your, your f-stop so that you're at like 2.8 and the rest of it will just blur out. But if you can't do that in time, do it in post-processing. Do a mask around the subject and blur the background. I guarantee you what it'll do is it'll just bring our eye more focused, literally, on where you want it to be. And that's really important. That's our job as photographers is to direct attention. And you've done a really great job. That's an easy fix. While you're at it, I would probably <laughs> remove that line above the building there go up straight where yeah right there why not get rid of that it it does something to kind of for me it just interferes with the fact that that blackness is behind it i just get rid of it but otherwise that's really this is easy easy work easy fixes and just again remember to Move your aperture. That's why I shoot an aperture priority because what I'm really looking for is what my aperture is doing. I don't need to shoot in manual and adjust everything. I usually I know what my shutter speed is going to be and I'm going to adjust my aperture according to what I want to remain in focus. That's the use of that tool. Okay, one more. All right, if we're doing one more, let me quick. Grab this. This is from our good friend, Mache. Ah, cool. And this is brother and sister. Really sweet. I love the, the you know, the kind of a halo light yeah, hitting the sister. Yeah. Um, I wonder how you process that. What I would like to see is just a little more... Um, dynamic range which means blacker blacks whites are pretty white but I would make the blacks blacker and the best way to do that is with silver effects pro it'll just pop a little more it you know I, I I like to see as much range as I can and it makes your eye really go to this and go wow because it's a beautiful image and that's just a processing point you've got you've captured your image Try it in Silver Effects Pro and bring out those blacks a little deeper. All right. Well, listen, you guys are doing awesome, and thank you for submitting your work. In the AYP Club, we'd love to see that there. That's This is what I like to do. You don't see me going into AYP Club much and leaving comments. I'd rather do it like this where we talk about your images. So I hope you guys are continuing to move along with your photography and advancing all the time because that's really important and i hope these uh comments help you even if it's not your photograph you should be able to learn things from these notes these are notes okay so 
make sure you're using your composition field guide. Let me know. Follow me on Instagram and leave a comment there. Um, please keep working with each other in the AYP club. That's really important, you know, to be with like-minded photographers and hang out together. And other than that, we're doing some really cool stuff behind the scenes. You're not going to see really what we're doing because it's all under the hood, but it's pretty amazing and we're going to be releasing some new stuff soon so stay tuned and other than that i want you guys if you haven't already subscribed please do so and enable the bell and like leave your comments share i think a lot of people could benefit from this series we're doing and last but not least remember to get out and capture your own images of life Stay creative, you guys, and we'll see you real soon.